Six to shoot. Butler sizes up Hill. And he Welcome to the Dapper Dog. Since it's sports month, this week we're going to take a look at the luxuries an NBA salary can afford. Who do you think are the biggest fashion offenders? And what do you think about Paul Pierce's oversized suit jackets? Let us know in the comments section about your thoughts and we will judge them together. NBA superstars are known to only do limited acts, mainly doing a three-point shot, be a role model, endorse a sneaker, or a serial, be a player. Before LeBron, basketball players were expected to function inside a limited space, and now NBA players are no longer content with simple and mundane fashion and the results, for better or worse, are usually worth noticing. On our previous content, we talked about the best dressed NBA players, so now we'll do the contrary. Because today, the Dapper Dog brings you the most outrageously dressed NBA players. Subscribe to the Dapper Dog and ring the bell icon to get regular updates on our latest uploads. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. Our first worst dresser is the youngest player ever to play in the NBA game, Andrew Bynum. Bynum played the majority of his career with the Los Angeles Lakers and won two NBA championships with the Lakers in 2009 and 2010. He was named an All-Star and selected to the All-NBA team in 2012. After seven seasons with the Lakers, Bynum was traded to the Philadelphia 76ers in 2012 as part of a four-team deal that sent All-Star center Dwight Howard to Los Angeles. Unfortunately, Bynum missed the entire 2012 to 2013 season because of his knee problems, so he signed as a free agent with the Cleveland Cavaliers, where he briefly played before being traded to the Chicago Bulls, who subsequently released him, then signed with the Indiana Pacers for the remainder of the 2013-14 season. Since Bynum left the Lakers, he's become a media magnet for all the wrong reasons. Starting from a fashion point of view, Bynum is undeniably one of the NBA's worst fashion offenders. Even though the 7-foot, 0-inch center tries to stick to the league's dress code, he just can't catch a break when it comes to the fashion world. Between his outrageous hairstyles and oversized blazers, Bynum looks like Cat Williams on stilts at times when he's on the bench. Though Bynum's NBA career can be tarnished forever, his infamous fashion sense will be immortalized in the hearts of sports fans across the globe. Los Angeles Clippers power forward center Joaquim Noah's sense of style is so offensive that even when he tried to look sharp, the NBA forced him to go back to the locker room during a game against the Indiana Pacers in 2013. And during the talk at the ESPNChicago.com, Nick Friedel about the incident Noah said, that's not my style, but I want to be out there with my guys. Looking back to the barbershop quartet outfit he wore during the 2007 NBA draft, Noah's sense of style has been questionable at best. Noah is also considered as one of the NBA's most rugged defenders. Obviously, off the court, the struggle is real for the former Florida Gator product. Joaquim Simon Noah holds three citizenships, Swedish, American, and French, since he was born in New York City to a Swedish mother and a French father. Noah played college basketball for the Florida Gators, winning back-to-back -back NCAA championships in 2006 and 2007, and the Chicago Bulls selected Noah with the ninth overall pick in the 2007 NBA Draft. Then he became a two-time NBA All-Star, was named to the All-NBA First Team in 2014, and was also named as the NBA Defensive Player of the Year, and he also represented France in international competitions. And, and roll hard, and good things will happen, you've got to do it. Ah, Just like that. The young Memphis Jaron Jackson Jr., born on September 15, 1999, Jackson was considered as one of the top players in the 2017 graduating class, and Scout.com ranked him as the fifth best player nationally, first in his respective position and second overall in the Midwest region. Jaron Jackson Jr. was also recruited by several notable programs, including Michigan State, Notre Dame, Butler, Indiana, Purdue, Maryland, and several more. He also helped the United States of America under-17 basketball team to win the gold medal at the, at the FIBA 2016 World Championships, where he averaged 4.3 points, 5.2 rebounds, 1.2 block shots, and shot 53% from the field. He was also a former member of the USA Junior National Select Team that participated in the 2017 Nike Hoop Summit in Portland, Oregon. And coming off the bench, Jackson tallied 13 points and a game-high 9 rebounds in 25 minutes of play. During the 2020 pregame, Jackson wore a gray Balciaga logo crew neck sweater and paired it with a tight knee ripped jeans. Clearly, the crew neck won't save the guy's family jewels from being suffocated by those pants and nut-hugging jeans were a thing once upon a time. But this is 2020, and the wide-legged let them breathe movement is well underway. 
shot. Tim Duncan's 2014 fashion style. Tim Duncan is a former player who is now an assistant coach for the San Antonio Spurs of the National Basketball Association. Duncan is often regarded as the greatest power forward of all time and is one of the greatest players in NBA history. Duncan spent his entire 19-year playing career with the Spurs in 2016, then announced his retirement from the NBA after 19 seasons with San Antonio. And on December 18th, the same year, the Spurs retired Duncan's number 21 jersey in a post-game ceremony, making him the eighth Spur in franchise history to have his jersey retired. And for a guy who has been arguably the best power forward to ever lace up a pair of kicks, Duncan dressed like he closed his eyes in a big and tall store and just yelled, uh, give me one of everything. So if you're looking the way not to dress in 2014, look no further than San Antonio Spurs legend Tim Duncan. It seems like he isn't enamored by the world of fashion and recent trends. He's fine with winning NBA championships and proving that no matter how old he gets, he can still dominate at his position. Obviously he doesn't take many, but what a clutch shot from Tim Duncan. Clipper is Jahil Okafor. To prove our point, Okafor once wore stripes and covered it with a black coat then fasten the bottom button of his coat, the one button on a coat that must never be fastened. Now let's take a moment to dwell on how he can mess up an outfit and notice how just one small thing can ruin the proportions of a look and make Okafor look like his torso alone is five feet tall. Jahil Obika Okafor is a Nigerian-American professional basketball player for the New Orleans Pelicans. He played his freshman season of college for the 2014-15 Duke National Championship team, Okafor was selected with the third overall pick in the 2015 NBA Draft by the Philadelphia 76ers and has previously played in the NBA for the 76ers and Brooklyn Nets. Many style rules are meant to be broken, but Okafor's outfit on the 2019-2020 season pregame demonstrates why some rules absolutely must not be broken. Always remember to fasten the middle button, never the bottom button. Injury and not having played Tubby Wow, what a shot that was. It was behind him. We also have Paul Pierce as one of our NBA players' worst dresser. Pierce played 19 seasons in the National Basketball Association from 1998 to 2017. He is currently an analyst on ESPN's basketball programs. The Jump and NBA Countdown. A starter from the get-go, Pierce scored 19 or more points in 10 of his first 11 contests. It was on his way to being one of the best young players in the game. And for a year, he averaged 16.5 points and finished third in the voting for Rookie of the Year honors. Amusing, yes. But outside the court, Pierce isn't someone to look after to, unless the current trend is fitted suits and clean cut. Pierce fashion sense is slacking, bulky ties and oversized suit jackets that makes him look like he either pushes Pontiacs in the offseason or doubles as a substitute teacher. But luckily for him, he has an NBA championship and a legendary career that he can fall back on when people start clobbering his wardrobe. Well, who would forget Amari Studemir, the 6.82 feet American Israeli player for Maccabi Tel Aviv of the Israeli Premier League and the Euro League. Studemir won the NBA Rookie of the Year award in 2003 with the Phoenix Suns, who selected him with the ninth overall pick of the 2002 NBA Draft, and made six appearances in the NBA All-Star Game and was named to the All-NBA team five times, including one first-team selection in 2007. And January this year, Studemir returned to Israel for a third stint, signing with Maccabi Tel Aviv for the rest of the season. In July the same year, Studemir helped Maccabi Tel Aviv win the championship while earning Israeli League Finals MVP honors. But during the Tommy Hilfiger's 25th anniversary show in New York, Studemir was spotted sitting next to Anna Winter, the British-American journalist and editor who has been editor-in-chief of Vogue since 1988 and artistic director for Condé Nast, Vogue's publisher since 2013. Winter and Studemir were joined in the front row by an all-star lineup including Christina Hendricks and Jennifer Lopez, designed to provide maximum coverage for the landmark show. Yes, it's odd to see an NBA sports star who had never been to a fashion show before in that kind of event, but what's stranger than that is when Studemir was seen wearing an impressive pairing of items that obviously don't belong together. He has stripes in all directions. A Jimmy Stewart varsity sweater, a tie made from a bangle, and the longest pair of skinny pants ever made. Well, at least he'll never be criticized for being a boring dresser. That's it for us today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give us a like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the Dabber Dog for more amazing videos. Don't forget to ring the bell icon to stay updated with our content. See you in the next video.